Hello guys, Satyajit Patnaik here and welcome back to my channel. You're watching the deep learning playlist and today's topic is about the linear activation function. In the previous class, we talked about the step function. And before that, we talked about the basics of neural networks, how neural networks learn and all those things. If you're not clear on those topics, please visit that video and then you can come back to the linear function video. <laughs> So today's topic, as I already told you, it's going to be linear activation function. Let's try to understand what is a linear function. As the name suggests, it's a straight line function where activation is proportional to input. This particular example is an example of y equals to mx because I don't have the c variable, right? So before understanding the linear function, let's try to understand what is linear. So let's say I have two axes, which is my X axis and Y axis. Let's say I want to draw some line, something like this. Now, obviously we know the, the, the equation of line is Y equals to MX plus C. Now, what if my C is zero? If my C is zero, that means the line will pass through the center. It could be like this. It could be like this. It could be multiple lines through this particular thing right so so this is basically a linear function it's nothing but a straight line function where activation is proportional to input the basic formula of a linear function is a equals to mx which is nothing but y equals to mx right the derivative of which will be m if i take a derivative of the y let's say as we already know the basics right so let's say i'm taking a derivative of this one so d by dx of y is equals to d by dx of mx plus c. So it will be d by dx of mx plus d by dx of c. Derivative of a constant is always zero, right? And derivative of constant into x is definitely the constant value because derivative of x is nothing but one, right? So the output will be m. So a equals to mx or y equals to mx, the derivative of which will be m, which is a constant, which means gradient has no relationship with x. It is constant gradient and descent is going to be a constant descent. Now, before understanding what is gradient, what is all these things, let's try to understand the basics again. Okay, I'll just draw another line. Let's say something like this. Now, gradient is nothing but gradient is nothing but change in y divided by change in x. Okay, let's, let's take a small example. Let's say I'm taking two points here. And let's say here, let's say this is uh, two, three. And this is eight, six, probably. So what we need to do is let's try to create a line. Okay, something like this, something like this. Now, what is gradient here? Gradient is nothing but change in Y divided by change in X. Now, what is change in Y? So if I draw something like this, if I draw a right angle triangle, let's say I'll name it as A, I'll name it as B, I'll name it as C. So what is my change in Y? That means this is my change in Y. What is my change in X? This is my change in X. So what will be the value for C? What will be the coordinates for C? In X axis, it is eight. In Y axis, it is three, right? Now, as we already know, between two lines, what will be the distance between two lines? So it will be six minus three square, root over of that, right? So it's three divided by, what will be the change in X? Eight minus two, six. So the gradient is 0 0.5. For this particular line, the gradient is 0 0.5. Now, if I have a steeper line, let's say, let's say I'll redraw it, maybe this blue one. Let's say this is another line, line two. And let's say in purple, I'm taking this is line three. So this is a more steeper line. Now, what will be the gradient of this one? the change in Y is greater than change in X. So for this line, the gradient will always be greater than one. Or you can say the gradient is increasing as compared to the 
green line for l3 if i have to find the gradient the delta y and delta x delta y is very small as compared to delta x that means the gradient is nearly equal to zero not zero but it's decreasing at least lesser than 0.5 lesser than this value right because delta y is very small as compared to delta x so which otherwise means the gradient decreases so the fundamentals is that gradient increases when there is a steeper line when the line is not steep like less steeper then the gradient decreases basically that's not called as a good situation or it's it's not considered good because the the one of the problems with linear function is that think about connected layers now as i told you in neural networks we have hidden layers right so if we use linear function in all the hidden layers what will happen so think about connected layers each layer is activated by a linear function that activation goes into next level as input and second layer calculates weighted sum on the input and in turn fires based on a linear activation function right no matter how many layers we have if we are linear in nature the final activation function is still going to be linear right now take a small example what the main motive of this is multi using multiple linear functions in multiple hidden layers is still considered as linear in nature it's not lin non linear in nature now for an example i have one input and i have two hidden layers and i have my final output let me draw it something like this and let's say this is n2 this is n4 this is n1 this is n3 okay now what will be my n1 my n1 is nothing but w1 x1 let's consider this as x1 this let's consider this as y1 okay so w1 x1 now again w1 is my weight now what is my n2 n2 is w2 x2 sorry w2 x1 right because i just have one input what will be my n3 now i'm considering these two are using the linear functions right now what will be my n3 n3 will be let's say this is w3 so w3 n1 plus let's say this value is w4 w4 n2 now what is n1 let's replace the values with this w3 into w1 x1 plus w4 what is n2 w2 x1 w2 x1 now what will be the output w3 into w1 into x1 plus w4 into w2 into x1 so which is nothing but w3 w1 plus w4 w2 into x1 that means it is still in the format of a equals to mx right here also it was a equals to mx mx plus c or else okay so that means these two layers or n layers can be replaced by a single layer as combination of linear functions is always linear in nature okay that is also one of the demerit or one of the cons of using a linear function so if you are using linear functions you can use it in one of the layers but not in all the layers okay linear function is used but not widely as i told you so in the next video we shall be talking about some other activation functions like sigmoid function tanh functions and relu functions which are morely used in the hidden layers so stay connected thank you for watching and uh, let's let's meet for the next video if you haven't subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel and like and share among your friends as well thank you guys mm -hmm.